The New York Times wrote a story about a very famous wrestler from Iran. His name is Navid Afkayari, and he went to a peaceful protest. More than 50% of Iran's population is under 30. And while the official unemployment rate for this group is 20%, experts say it's closer to 40. These protests are fueled by people in Iran's rural provinces who are normally supportive of the regime. As the protests grow, there are reports that authorities have blocked access to Telegram and Instagram. He's, uh, he's going to be executed for that. So it was brought to my attention and I, you know, this guy is, first of all, he's a human being, number one. Number two, he's one of us, could be any of my fighters. To the leaders of Iran, I would greatly appreciate if you would spare this young man's life and not execute him. I too, respectfully and humbly, ask the government officials in Iran to please not execute this man and spare his life. The reason this story is so big, so important, is because it involves an athlete who took part in a peaceful protest and what now looms as he is on death row. In 2018, protests were set off by the doubling price of eggs, though it was more than that. They protested for the BBC, economic hardship and political repression. The protests began in Mashhad and rapidly spread. While the numbers aren't big, the geography is. But they quickly have morphed into calls for reform and revolution. Rouhani. Rouhani is the president of Iran, who like many other politicians, gave billions of dollars away, just not to those in his country who need it most. A champion wrestler. Navid Afkari represents the country's national pastime. After protesting, Afkari, along with his two brothers, Habib and Vahid, were arrested by Iranian authorities. The crimes they are charged with? Let's take a look. Attending illegal gatherings, assembly and conspiracy to commit crimes against national security, and insulting the supreme leader. The most brazen charge against Navid? two death sentences over the murder of a security guard during protests in Shiraz. The Iranian government claims Navid confessed his crime, but there is severe doubt. Like the Saudis torturing their citizens, Iran did the same to extract a confession with Navid, who filed a complaint detailing how he was forced to give false confessions while being subjected to, quote, the most severe physical and psychological torture during nearly 50 days in police detention. Coercing confessions is a theme for Iran, where the UN wrote of this widespread pattern and problem. In one instance, Navid says his captures used a plastic bag to cover his head and poured alcohol into his nostrils. Here's the important part. The brothers' lawyer, Hassan Younesi, said on Twitter that contrary to Iranian news reports, there was no video of the moment of the security guards killing. He added that footage used as evidence in the case was taken an hour before the crime took place. Death sentences from a judicial system that ignores evidence, denies due process, and tortures its detainees into false confessions are nothing less than murder, said Hadid Gaimi executive director of the Center for Human Rights in Iran. His brothers, Vahid Afkari and Habib Afkari, were similarly convicted unjustly with Navid and sentenced to 54 and 27 years in prison, respectively. The planned execution date for Navid Afkari was September the 9th. Reports have stated that that has not taken place. Here is to hoping for Navid and his brothers' imminent release.